Welcome everybody to Muscoot Farm. I'm Jonathan Benjamin and today is Abraham Lincoln's birthday. So we thought it would be great to read Abe Lincoln, The Boy Who Loved Books by Kay Winters and Nancy Carpenter. Be sure to stick around afterwards because we will be making a Abe Lincoln craft. In the wilds of Kentucky, 1809, a boy was born. His mother called him Abraham, his last name Lincoln. His bed was made from corn husks, his covers, skins from bears, his cabin built with logs from towering trees. Abe said his first words in that one room cabin, took his first steps on a hard dirt floor. A wood fire chased the cold and cooked corn pone. The door swung open, shut on leather hinges, hinges. A tiny window looked out on his world. When he was two, his folks packed up their goods, moved Abe and sister Sarah to Knob Creek. The Cumberland Trail ran close to their new cabin. Abe saw peddlers, pioneers, politicians, Traders, slaves passed by. As Abe grew, he talked to travelers, heard where they'd been, where they were going. He saw their world was wider than his own. His ideas stretched, his questions rose, his dreams were stirred. At school, he worked with numbers one to 10. He shaped his letters A to Z with a charcoal stick. He wrote them down day in, day out, in school, at home. In dust and snow, on logs of wood, the letters cast a magic spell. He loved to learn. His parents had no schooling, but when the day was done, the family sat close by the fire. His mother shared the Bible stories she knew by heart. His father spun yarns, told jokes, and made them laugh. When Abe was seven, the family moved again. The Lincoln set out one December morning, their bits and pieces piled on two stout horses. They walked and rode a hundred miles to Indiana. They crossed the Ohio River on a makeshift ferry. Abe helped his father hack a trail through forests thick with trees and tangled vines until at last they came to land they claimed. No cabin waited at Little Pigeon Creek. Instead, a half-faced camp of branches, twigs, and logs was where they had to stay. One side opened wide to wilderness. The family kept the wood pile stacked. The blazing fire scared off wild animals that roamed the woods. Bears growled, wolves howled, panthers screamed, Abe shivered. Dark was a fearsome time. Then settlers came to help the family raise a home. Now Abe and Sarah had a loft to call their own. Abe loved to climb up to his sleeping place but snow and wind blew through the cabin's cracks. The outside crept indoors and iced the walls. Just once, Abe shot a turkey in the woods, but not again. He vowed he would not take the breath from living things. When Abe was eight, he helped his father clear the land. He learned to swing an ax and fell the trees, but he longed to learn from books go back to school. When Abe turned nine, dark days fell upon him. Milk sickness took his mother to her grave. Abe whittled pegs to put in her pine coffin, his grief so deep he could not speak her name. A year limped by. His father went to find a wife. He brought back a widow with three children. Her heart so wide, she took in Abe and Sarah as her kin. And she owned books. 
She let Abe read when chores were done. Once more, their house of logs became a home. She sent the children back to school. Abe wore two short buckskins and a raccoon cap. He drew his letters with a turkey buzzard quill. Abraham Lincoln, his hand and pen, he will be good, but God knows when. He learned to add, subtract on planks of wood, but most of all, he loved to read, win spelling bees, spin yarns, and tell tales. When school was shut, Abe hired out to farmers. His father kept the earnings for the family. Abe split rails, dug wells, chopped trees, but all the while he worked, he yearned to learn. To anyone who'd listen, he liked to say, the things I want to know are in books. Once rain leaked through the cabin roof and soaked a book he'd borrowed, for three hot days, Abe pulled stalks of corn in his friend's field to pay him back. When Abe plowed, a book sat in his back pocket. At each row's end, he'd take it out and read. His horse would wait for him to turn the page. The neighbors shook their heads and called him lazy. They did not understand this bookish boy. Abe knew he must move on, out of the wilderness. Splitting rails and plowing land was not his dream. At 19, he pulled a flatboat down the river saw people and places beyond backwoods, saw black men, women, and their children bound in chains. A sign above their heads read, auction block. A life for sale, like hatchet, ax, or plow? Abe knew it was unjust to own another. New Salem, Illinois was where Abe settled. A hundred folk or more lived in this place. He hired on to run the general store, Folks like to tell that once he overcharged someone six cents, but honest Abe walked miles to give it back. Even here, Abe was asked to prove his worth with brawn, not brains. The owner of Abe's store set up a wrestling match against the leader of a wild and rowdy gang. Reluctantly, Abe took Jack Armstrong on. Some said that Abe pinned Jack to the floor. Others swore Arm Armstrong beat Abe with a trick. But when Jack saw Abe's strength, he shook his hand and they became close friends in years to come. By firelight, he studied law without a teacher. Soon he became a lawyer in the courts. Abe saw that words could free or jail a man. He found that words could change the way folks thought. When politics began to call his name, Abe aimed his words at wrongs he'd like to right. Friends said that he should run for public office. He tried for Congress first, and then the Senate, and at last he ran for the highest office in the land. Abraham Lincoln, born in a log cabin, child of the frontier, head in a book, elected our 16th president. From the wilderness to the White House, he learned the power of words and used them well. And again, that was Abe Lincoln, The Boy Who Loved Books by Kay Winters and Nancy Carpenter. And if you stick around, we're gonna make a craft. Okay, so we just read about Abraham Lincoln and we learned that he lived in a log cabin. And so today we're gonna kind of make our own Lincoln log house. So what you'll need is a paper bag, some markers, some scissors, glue, and just some construction paper. And if you really want to get fun with it, you can print out some pictures of Abraham Lincoln to put inside the house. So the first thing that I would like to do is this is going to be our house. So I would take a brown marker, but you can use whatever color you want. And we're going to draw some lines on it to make it look like logs. So one thing that we know is maybe not all logs are the same size. So you can make, you know, some short logs like that. Um, they're not all gonna be uniform because back then it wasn't so easy to do. So just make it look 
however you want. And so we know we need that. So go from the bottom of the bag all the way to the top. Yeah. So those are our logs. Then the next thing we want to do is we're going to maybe make a window. So let's cut just a square out. You can use, again, any color paper that you want. And I may have actually made that a little too big. So and these kinds of houses back then were not uncommon. So they were log cabins. They typically had dirt floors and they were filled with like straw and they were usually like one room. So they would have a little bit of a kitchen and um, all of the family would live kind of in one room. And on top of that, if you were lucky enough, like Abraham Lincoln, you would have a loft and then maybe that's where the kids would sleep. But there would be one big fireplace inside where everyone would gather around in the winter months. So there's our window that we just glued in. So maybe you want to draw a little frame, like a window frame around it. Like that. Okay. So we have a log cabin. I think the next thing we probably want is a roof. So we want to put a roof on there. So a roof is basically just a triangle shape. So we can use our construction paper here and we're gonna wanna see kind of how tall we want it. So This is our triangle. I think we're going to just glue that right to the top of the bag. Just like so. And I said earlier, there's the roof, the window. I said earlier that they had a fire, a fireplace in there. So that would mean that they would have to have a chimney as well. So let's cut us a, a little chimney. So we cut our chimney out and I just took a black marker and kind of made it look like bricks. So now we need to glue our chimney onto the roof where it would have been. And they wouldn't have had bricks like we have um, nowadays either. These would have been made of clay probably or just materials that they found there. So now we need a door, right? Because Honest Dave's got to find his way in. So we're gonna cut out this picture of Abe and make a door for him. So we have our picture of Abe Lincoln cut out and we are going to go ahead and glue him right where he needs to be. Then we have this picture, this little piece here that we're gonna use as our door. So it needs to be bigger than your Abraham Lincoln picture. And what you wanna do is get it to where you can kind of bend it back, sort of like a door. And if you remember in the book, it said that they had leather hinges back in the day. Now we have metal, but back then. So you make a fold just like that. Then you're gonna kind of put your glue on the fold. And you wanna make sure that it goes like that. So now we have that, draw a little doorknob, and then knock, knock, who's there? Honest Abe. So then you can open this bag up, and there you have it, an Abe Lincoln log house. I hope you enjoyed this craft, and I hope you learned something. Have a great day.